Mm. Fuck. And I should have known better. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, fuck me, bro. Oh shit, that was way too loud. Fuck me. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And now I don't know what to get my head out of it. Out of it. And I got my head on the wrong side of the bed. Don't know what I'm gonna do about to get it today, but I'm about to lose it in the day of my head. I'm about to walk up on the wrong side of the bay. What's up, everybody? I have like four viewers, so I don't know how many people are actually here, here, but I know you're in the vicinity, and that's the most important thing. Uh, let's see. Things kind of got fucked today. This was not... Well, things got fucked yesterday, and then it kind of bled into today. So, in, by proxy, everything is fucked. Everything is fucked. What's up, Red Dragon? Yeah, this has been a weird Labor Day. And so, this has also just been a weird day for me in general been a lot of crazy shit there's also a bunch of questions i haven't answered yet so that's a whole other thing is today sunday no today is monday but okay so let me explain for those who are just now showing up no i'm off today that's why i'm off today it's labor day i got a day off that's why I'm, I'm i'm doing this so here's the situation that happened yesterday i did not feel great at all uh, that's probably the reason why the Snafu review didn't come out until Sunday. It's probably the reason why the Pokemon review came out later than it should have. I didn't feel great at all yesterday, and I didn't feel great uh, the the latter half of Saturday. Like I didn't feel great during the SpongeBob playthrough, but I still wanted to do that, especially considering how quickly uh, that game will be over with soon-ish. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and still do it. But due to all that, I mean, I was like, fuck, I, I can't do the stream today. So I was I was in Tyrone's stream uh, for us doing, like, Uno slash uh, Among Us. What's up, Salt Queen? Uh, so I was in the, I was in that stream yesterday with Tyrone, Salt, uh, uh, Nessa, uh, Richie, everyone there. Uh, but I didn't do my normal Sunday stream because of it. Uh, so I wanted to do that today. And then I see Juice. As fucking went, oh, well, we're going to do the podcast early. So the podcast, the 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 Juice, the Juice of Zeus podcast, that kicks off at like 4.30. So because the Juice of Zeus podcast kicks off at 4.30, that means I literally have an hour and a half. And I was like, motherfucker. I don't know if I ate bad food or what. I don't know what the hell happened. But that means I only really get an hour to do this. I don't know if I'm going to do the Poke Pod. It, I mean, I do have to work tomorrow. So I don't know. So that means I got to do this in this small ass time frame, and then like probably 20 minutes or 30 minutes after this, this stream ends, I'll be right back on the juices loose doing the same thing again. But this is what you do when you're a YouTube content creator. You put out, damn, 15 people already. Let's go. Okay. So there's only like a couple of things of note that have come out in terms of the, the world of gaming news. But I kind of want to hit the main topic first because I put it in there. So with the Mario 35th anniversary, uh, 
You a savage, Lightning. Uh, but with the, the Mario 35th anniversary stream, and we got the announcements of the pseudo real life Mario Kart uh, game. I think it's just called Mario Kart Live. Then you got All Stars on Nintendo Switch Online. Then you got the 3D Mario ports. You got Mario 3D Land plus Bowser Fury. Uh, a bunch of items like apparel stuff, like shoes and Legos and stuff. Uh, all in all, I know people are annoyed because they don't have. Um, I know people are annoyed because they didn't get a lot of new new stuff. Like people want, obviously, people want Mario Kart Nine announcement. Uh, what's up, Antri? Thank you for the well wishes. Hope you guys are having a happy Labor Day too. Uh, but with all these announcements, you didn't really get any new games. People are mad because there's more Wii U ports. I and that is going to be a, a limited release. I do want to talk about the rumor mill in general because I feel like, especially on the Juice Loose, you guys know people really don't like rumors, right? And I think me and Robert are like the only ones who are pretty chill about it, but I want to give a different perspective because I feel like it's funny to me how the worst sides of rumors are two sides, but the second side doesn't get talked about enough. The side that most people talk about when they talk about how they can't stand rumors is how people overhype things and turn things into things that were never confirmed and how you shouldn't be excited for certain rumors and whatnot. What's up, Let's Switch James? Uh, thank you for showing up. Um... But people are freaking out about like that side of the room. And, oh, Emily Rogers. But to me, I feel like the hatred of rumors is just as bad on the same frame. And that that's referring to people like T and Juice and Retro who get so and clocked and who get so angry about, oh no, they're rumors. They're fucking like to me, the hatred of rumors is just on the same tier as the overhypeness of uh of rumors. Because like you both you like, okay, so you're getting overly hyped about an idea and then taking out your rage if the idea isn't true. But you're on the other side of the coin getting angry at people for getting hyped about an idea, but then getting just as angry when the idea turns to be true because you didn't like the original rumor in the first place. Like, to me, there is no... Uh, there is no benefit both ways. Like, in both situations... It's, it's bad because people need to just learn to take rumors with a grain of salt and not to hold that much stock into them. But people are so angry with the rumor culture as if it's something new. Like this shit's been going on for the longest. People like content and people get excited for things that are coming in the future. There's nothing wrong with being interested in rumors. The whole point of the rumor mill is not to fucking let the shit consume you, which a lot of people do. A lot of people let this rumor culture Consume the shit out of them. But being angry about it to this extent where you're genuinely... People were... I, I was in the... When we were talking to Juice Loose in the chat, we were, they were like, uh, I hope the rumor isn't true. Like, So you're actively rooting against a rumor that people would want to be true not being true because you hate the rumor mill so much. Well, how does that make you seem productive in that situation? Like, you're not helping in any other way either because you have all this vitriol and anger towards some shit that doesn't really hurt you in the long run. It cause if the rumor turns out to be true, boom, that's new games, that's new content, that's new shit. And as and as well and as you probably guys have noticed or learned, as much as the, the the port hatred has been talked about on that podcast, low key I think a lot of people are planning to get on get on that Mario 3D Mario uh collection. Even though uh we can easily make the argument that the collection uh doesn't stack up to other collections that have come out in the recent years like the fact that you have crash and spirals collections that came out and they weren't even, they weren't even full price and they were full remakes like in terms of a collection the mario one doesn't really hold the same candle because it's essentially still the same games with some mild improvements like you like better textures and some more and some interesting button prompts like there's nothing like crazy about the the ports or the uh the remasters for Mario, but people still wanted them because regards, even if it's actually some people are glad it's the old games. Why? Because the problem with certain remakes, and this has been true for Nintendo and like other games. Like I think people said it for Ratchet and Clank's Ratchet and Clank's remake on the PS4. People have said it about I think it was the Majora's Mask remake on 3DS. Some people actually prefer the original game and its original glory. Uh, but the point is, is that these it's still another port that like hits 
that still doesn't hit where where it could have in the sense that oh well you could have remade the game entirely and whatnot but people still want to fucking buy it though like that's the irony of it all people still want to get it so like how bad was the how bad is it that they're just more traditional ports and i'm pretty sure a good chunk of the members on the juice loose podcast was like i want to get the game and i'm like cool you want to get the game that's not really a problem but my thing is you can't like you can't like realistically you can't have this whole anti-port thought process and then still be on the other side like well i still low-key want to get the game well what the what the fuck so apparently you don't hate ports that fucking much Yeah, that's the other thing. People, I mean, I remember we were, we were having conversations where people were like, oh, they're probably going to charge $60 for each of the games individually. Well, no, we got a collection. But it's limited run. Well, so was the original. I think I'm pretty sure the original Mario All-Stars on the Wii, that collection was was uh, was uh limited run. Now, granted, does that make it necessarily right that it's limited run? Not inherently. But it's, it's at the very least, you couldn't argue that it's not consistent. I'm going to try to bring, I'll probably bring it up in here because I feel like the, the anti, to me, the anti-rumor uh, culture is just as unhealthy. This whole, like, overly angry narrative behind people getting excited for ports. Like, I feel like, now, regardless if you're excited for ports, that's that's fine. I don't care if you don't have an excitement for ports, especially if you're someone who's played the game. And I even said this a while ago that the Switch ports, unfortunately, the Switch, unfortunately, it does not give a fuck about the Wii U owner. The Wii U owner is going to get burned uh, regardless of the situation. And they just don't give a fuck. Also, thank you for hosting the stream, Type Sad. I appreciate it. Um, But yeah, fucking the, the, the anti... Oh, shit. My mother's calling. This is like all interruptions today. What the hell? Hello? All right. Bye. Bye. All right, here we go. Gaming would be less exciting without rumors and speculation. Well, that's true because people like to have those conversations. But see, now we have the jadedness, like the Pikmin 4 thing. The Pikmin 4 thing is such a, or the or the supposed Star Fox Racers rumor. People are so angry. Yeah, we're talking about the Mario port. So the Mario ports were announced and some people are happy, some people are mad. Some people are happy it's a collection. Some people are mad that the games aren't full more react, full more aren't more remastered is what I mean to say. Also, Lightning, thank you for the host. Um, there's a lot of back and forth with these things, and I get it. Moral of the story is that people ain't shit all the way around. Fans ain't shit. Actually, that's actually that's a pretty fair uh rep, that's a pretty fair statement, actually. A rumor isn't worth looking into unless it's from a reliable source. That's true. It's one it's one of those things where I feel like people lose their mind so easily and so quickly over rumors. And that's both sides of the coin. The moment you hear another rumor, it's like cuz here's the thing, if it's a rumor you give a fuck about, then you don't mind it as much. That's why I find, I I always find fucking ridiculous. People always talk about how rumors are a problem and the problems with rumors and I don't understand rumor culture. I understand how someone who's excited for a game franchise could go look up rumors that <laughs> I think Juice said that when Juice mentioned that whole thing about spoilers, like, I can't understand someone who's excited for a game looking up spoilers for a game. And I'm like, well, that's what the excitement comes from. Oh, you bitch. Don't you drop frames again. Fucking, this has just been a bad stream all around. (laughs) I apologize. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Nintendo's a company. Nintendo won't care if 2 million Pikmin owners get mad because of 6 million will buy Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Well, that's true. Business-wise, they don't give a fuck. But I guess the the, the argument is more so the fan's perspective. As a fan, because at the end of the day, uh, we're the ones buying this shit. Like, if it's really that, but the reality also is that it's the casual fan base that's getting it, not really the main fan base. A lot of people would say the hardcore fan base was the one supporting the Wii U, uh, which is true. I probably would say most people who owned a Wii U we're not casuals. And if there were, they were the smaller percent, smaller percentage. I think the main people who were supporting the Wii U were hardcore like Nintendo fans. Those were the ones uh, who were out there in the trenches. 
So the problem with the Switch currently is that with all the ports, it feels like the hardcore fans are getting burned by the lack of, by the push of ports. And uh, damn, you you ain't shit, studio. It feels like the hardcore fans are getting burned by the Wii U ports. Because realistically, if you're not a Wii U fan, you get burned. But the other thing I think that's important to mention is that, like, it also depends on what genres you're into. Like, realistically, Animal Crossing appealed way more to certain people than others. So, like, the problem is if you're not a person who's into, like, life sims, which is essentially what Animal Crossing is, and you weren't a fan of RPGs, guess what? It feels like you didn't have any games to play this year from, from Switch that were new. I'm still playing it. The problem is that a lot of hardcore fan base are, was split. A lot of the handheld, a lot were handheld only. Yeah, that was the other problem that, like, the Wii U, as much as the Wii U was good, there were better games coming out on the 3DS. Like, I understand that we want to do this revisionist history and that, like, the Wii U generation was so great. And I understand people's arguments with the whole... Because one of the arguments that comes up in, the, in our podcast a lot is the whole, oh, there were more third-party games, more current-gen third-party games out on the Wii U than there have been on the Switch, or they're too fucking equal. And the difference, I would argue, is that the Switch, once again, I would argue in a lot of situations, was hitting up. Like, like the Switch... When the Switch came out, the two consoles you had were 360 and PS3. So, of course, any game that could run on the 360 PS3, you would almost automatically assume can run on the motherfucking Wii U. And the problem with the Wii U ports, and my issue was, is that a lot of them were gimped in situations that had no right or no business being gimped. You had games like, what was it, Injustice that was missing fucking, I think we were getting DLC slower and I think we were missing modes, and it was like, what the fuck? And people were like, why don't people have that same energy with Switch? Well, because Switch is hitting down. There are just certain things you can do on a PlayStation 4 that you can't do on a Switch, like, graphically. Now, granted, I think any game can be ported with enough time and money. The problem is that, just like any other industry, this has this, this deals a lot in money. So people aren't going to be out here spending this insane amount of money Sorry, I'm responding to a text. Yeah, that was the thing. But people but people still would make the argument that the Wii U support front-loaded. But then again, you look at this year, and this year doesn't feel that great either. Um, which also I'm going to get into, uh, into some of the recent comments made by Nomura. Apparently, there's been like interviews that have recently come out about the Kingdom Hearts Rhythm game that's coming out on all platforms. And he talked about... Uh, about being having interest in putting Kingdom Hearts, the original games, on like the Switch, but supposedly it was like too technically hard, which I find a bunch of bullshit because it's fucking King. You're, you're talking about PlayStation 2 games. Most of these games are PlayStation 2, Vita, DS. Uh, yeah, I think it's PlayStation 2, uh, DS, PSP, and no, not Vita, but PSP and 3DS. I think fucking Dream Drop Distance is the newest game that you... And the only one I would argue they might have problems with is like 3 and fucking 2.8. And I'm like, bitch, how dare you? You're telling me all of a sudden that you can't put PlayStation 2 games? Especially when every other company has proven that to be a bunch of bullshit. We're getting PlayStation 3 games, and all of a sudden fucking Nomura's like, well, I don't think... I, what was it? I want to I wanna quote his ass verbatim. I'm going to get back to the Mario situation, but I want to real quick, because this pissed me off when he fucking said it. He's like, I don't know. I don't think it's technically possible. Here we go. I want to read his quote verbatim. Unfortunately, Swearings isn't planning on the other. Tessa Nomura told Nintendo enthusiasts that the company considered porting the other entries in the series, but found things to be technologically difficult. As Nomura himself, he finds the Switch very appealing and has interest in uh working with the system he also said another game of his could come to switch kingdom hearts melody and memory comes out november 14th i want to see if i can get the full quote i want the full fucking quote there he goes though a translator just more confirmed there are currently no specific plans for more kingdom hearts games on switch square enix did consider ports of the existing games for switch in the past 
but found that it was technologically difficult. However, Nomura believes that Nintendo Switch is very appealing. Essentially, it's a cop-out answer. Oh, they, they thought it was technologically difficult. You mean it was technologically difficult to get Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, Chain of Memories, fucking uh, Birth by Sleep, 358 Days Over 2, and fucking, what was it, Dream Drop, Distance, and Coded? Encoded, I think for I think what was it for 358 days over two, encoded I think are just cutscenes. I forget which ones are cutscenes. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. You out of your fucking mind <laughs> to sit there and tell me that bullshit that oh we can't do it because of the technological re- uh, limitations. And I'm sitting here in the back like, bitch, we have we have PlayStation three. Four games on this motherfucker. The most demanding games you have on your fu- out of that list of games I mentioned was Dream Drop Distance, which is effectively a GameCube game. The reason why I say it's the most difficult because compared to like the uh, PlayStation Two, GameCube was more powerful than PS Two. That is like the hardest game of all those games. It was fucking. I think it's because well, I'm trying to make sure PSP. I don't remember where PSP is. That's insane. That is absolutely insane and fucking dog shit. I apologize. This episode's all over the place, realistically. But that's what happens when you live in a chaotic fucking society. Shit just gets all over the place, and this stream is all over the place. Good news. Seems like the stream quality's been more consistent. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, that's what I thought. Coded in 358 days are on are fucking movies. We mean the frame rate. You What? I don't even get, bro, what? No, absolutely not. Absolutely fucking not. You're telling me you couldn't get a PlayStation 2 game to run at 60? Not nah, fine. If you want to make the argument that there isn't enough, like, space and that you would have to make downloads for some of the games on Switch, that's a fuck, whatever. I, we've been dealing with that anyway. I can handle that, bro. I can handle that, bro. But when you run your mouth and say some shit like, it was technologically difficult to get the games running. You're out of your fucking mind. Because you're talking about PlayStation 2 games. We have Devil May Cry. I think, was it 1, 2? I think we have Devil May Cry 1 through 4, if I remember right. Or 1 through 3. Which were PlayStation 2 games. And they run at 60. So what the fuck is the excuse here? It, ah, man, that, that shit. That's crazy to me, bro. That's crazy to me. I don't even the PS3 versions of, of, of that collection run run fine. That is in crazy. But I mean, yeah, Red Dragon, if you want to make the space comparison, that's fine. That's perfectly fine to make the space comparison. But don't sit there and act like these games couldn't run and then they can that Square Enix didn't try. I don't especially it makes me mad because you put them on Xbox. How much is you know what? Fuck it. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look to see how much Kingdom Hearts sold on motherfucking Xbox. I'm not talking about three. Well, I I'll bring up three anyway, but I'm more talking about uh Kingdom Hearts. I'm talking about the collections too. But I want to just see. They may not have the sales out for them. I'm just curious. Kingdom Hearts three. I don't even think they have sales for it. Let's look. Yeah, I think it's more the GPU that has a bottleneck when it comes to fucking... um, The GPU has a bottleneck in terms of uh, the Switch. But I want to just check something. I don't think they have the sales for it, which is kind of a shame, but... Let's see, that's three. What about the ports of one and two? That's my question. Uh, That's 2.8. I don't care about 2.8. I want to see... Yeah, I don't even think they have the collections for it. And it also makes me mad because they put Kingdom Hearts on Nintendo systems. They were putting it, they were put hell, the second game, the second game of the Kingdom Hearts franchise was on the fucking Game Boy Advance. You put fucking, uh, not Dream Drop Distance, uh, Chain of Memories. You went from one to Chain of Memories to two. So Game Boy fans got the fucking weird card spinoff that actually has information that's relevant to two. But essentially, that's why people used to complain about how being a Kingdom Hearts fan meant you had to own like six different fucking systems. You had to own a PlayStation 2, 
then you had to own a Game Boy Advance, then you had to own a fucking DS, then you had to own a PSP, then you had to own a fucking 3DS, then you had to own a fucking PlayStation 4. Now, that's before the goddamn collection, mind you. Well, except for the PlayStation 4 one. But, the, like, because you didn't get any Kingdom Hearts game on PS3, but you got one on 3DS, which made no fucking sense. What the fuck? We didn't get three until, like, towards the latter end of the, uh, it, uh, 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 yeah, that's my whole point. You put all the fucking side games and spinoffs except for Breath by Sleep and then fucking record it. And 358 days over two. I didn't even mention that one. Uh, that makes me mad because that, that's the, he, he's fucking lying. He's like outright lying about that shit. Talking about, oh, we can't. So I don't believe that. I don't hundred. I don't believe that at all that you couldn't. You guys, 3DS is, if memory is correct, which frustrates me because of Rune King H3. Yeah. But yeah, that's my that's my issue with that. Like, don't fucking sit there and tell me you couldn't run those games on PlayStation. Uh, you can put those on Switch. At the very least, even if you couldn't put 2.8 or 3, you could 100% put fucking 1, one through Dream Drop Distance. There's no way. There's no way you were going to convince me you couldn't get 1 through Dream Drop Distance on there. That's that. There's just no way. You can make the argument for 3 and 2.8, but you cannot tell me. Square just didn't want to put in the money. I don't think it was te- I don't think it was technology. I think it was money. I think it was money. I think realistically, it was like I I don't want to spend as much to put these ports on here, even though Nintendo fans people don't realize that like a bunch of people who own who play Kingdom Hearts are also Nintendo fans because we had to play the side games on Nintendo systems. You fucked. Uh, then this, this is probably one of the reasons why I think I said back in the day that like the way I look at xbox and first party is the same way i look at like nintendo oh sorry red dragon you're right uh but the way i look at xbox and first party is the same way i look at nintendo and third party just because nintendo has a popular console does not mean we're going to inherently get like all the third party games in the world yeah actually revolve that's another point dragon quest fucking dragon quest 11 can run on fucking switch but goddamn None of the Kingdom Hearts games can, man. Get the fuck out of here. They didn't want to spend the money to fucking to develop it. That's really what it is. So that that always that always blow, blew me away. But uh, yeah. But like I said, like unfortunately, Nintendo is still in the process of regaining trust with a bunch of fucking developers. And the reality is, just like any other generation, if the next console comes out and it's some dog shit or it doesn't do well. They will leave him. It will leave the company like a bad habit with fucking Nintendo. The reason why we've been getting a lot of ports from other consoles is a, because we never got those games in the first place. Nintendo fans never got Bioshock. We never got fucking, uh, Borderlands hell for a while. We weren't even getting 2k and we still don't get currently call of duty. Um, Nintendo has to regain. How did they lose it? They lost it through a lot of weird decisions on their part. And the fact that people didn't want to spend the reality is, is that, Companies, third party companies will go wherever they feel like there's money to be made. The problem is, is that if the money it takes for me to make the shit outweighs the money I potentially think I'm going to get, then guess what? I'm screwed. There's no point in me putting out the game. So, of course, you had N64 with the cartridges, GameCube with mini discs. And it was, ironically enough, the GameCube was a PS3 situation where, like, you could get better looking games on the GameCube, but the GameCube's format made it so much harder to get there. It was not worth it for them. So they said, fuck it. We'll put everything on the PS2. And when the PS2 started selling so much like gangbusters, it was like, well, there's no point in really investing that much into the GameCube and uh, in the in the Xbox like that. Even though they did end up sharing a lot of games, people just said, nah, fuck it. it it's better to, to invest in the PlayStation 2. Then we hit the Wii that changed the game completely. And the Wii, granted, got a bunch of exclusive content, but that was A, because it was selling so well, and two, because it was still cheaper to develop for, because it was still rocking like 480p graphics and shit. Like, it wasn't nothing crazy, so it was like, well, the graphics are lower, and we don't have to do a lot to change these games. So they ended up getting a bunch of exclusive content that worked out for certain developers. Then as soon as the fucking Wii U hit, we got a bunch of support within like the first year or so, and man, that shit dropped the fuck off. It dropped off hard. But I know we always want to keep making the comparison about how people view the the uh, the switch 
in some ways is is worse than the Wii U in certain aspects. And I agree in terms of features that that's completely agreeable. In terms of games, I know people make the argument we got better third party games than the Wii U, and I'm like, well, yeah, for the first year, but that's once again that first year was the year in which oh look, Nintendo was ahead graphically. So it, it justified us getting more ports. Like people, I feel like that's the main issue I always hate with the Wii U and Switch is that people act like it's the same situation and it's not. Just because they're both Nintendo consoles doesn't mean anything. The difference is pretty simple. The Wii U was ahead of the game when it came out. The Switch was behind the game when it came out. And granted, you can make the argument that it would be easier to port games down than to port them up. If they didn't feel like it was financially worth it, they weren't going to do it. And the Switch already had was still coming into the game lopsided because it was already lower in power. And then on top of that, companies still didn't want to get put games on Nintendo. People don't realize the situation that the Wii, that the Switch suffers from when it comes to third party is still partially based off of the situation that was started way back on the N64 and compounded in recent years by the, the Wii U, I mean by the Wii U and Wii. Primarily the Wii U. But the Wii didn't help because the Wii had a bunch of cool games that didn't sell for shit um people don't want to acknowledge that but there are a bunch of games on the wii that were really cool and really good that came out and didn't sell nowhere near as what they what people thought they would and that's partially because the wii's audience was all types of fucked up now you're going into this gen where the wii where the switch makes games that are old as hell still sell in ridiculously well i think recently it came out that the witcher 3 so well uh, for CD Projekt Red, when it uh, uh, recently, I think they were talking about financials, and they announced their um, what did they announce? They announced um, oh the PS5 and Xbox One, Xbox Series X versions. And those when people say Nintendo should have sub- sort of subsidized the cartridges for third party games are getting bigger, and some don't want to make downgrades. That's true. It also took no work to poop out a PS3 port on Wii U. But it takes effort to put a PS4 game on Switch. Well, you say that Black, you say that Black Jedi, but realistically, if that was the case, we would have got way more PS3 games on Wii U, and we didn't get a lot. We've actually gotten, I think, we've gotten more PS3 games on Switch than we have Wii U, which is almost insane to me, considering some of those games. But that was also because the Wii U and PS3 and 360 were pretty close. Yeah, I think it was like a million on... Uh, it sold at least well. They said it sold well. I don't think they gave numbers. But it was close to a million the last time it was checked. Well, yeah. But see, and I think the problem is... And listen, it's like it's not like I'm not a fan of the Wii U. But I also recognize the Wii U had its inherent problems. And it, I think it goes both ways for Switch. I understand that because Switch is doing well... Yeah, it had jo- yeah that was what, that's what it was. It was close to 700,000. And that was in April. So realistically, between April and now, it could have sold another 300, potentially. But that's just something to take note of. Is that like, I don't equate the 3D, uh, the Switch and Wii U's. Because realistically, Nintendo's always going to struggle with fucking third party in its current in the way they currently make consoles. Until Nintendo makes a console that is completely on par with the competition, they will always struggle with third party. And hell, even when they make a console that's that's uh, competent and comparable, they still might struggle. Because Nintendo still has a dumbass stigma behind it. Whether or not it's right or not doesn't really matter. I'm just saying. Also, my mother's going to come interrupt me. So for those who have their emotes ready, get your kicking the door emotes ready. Because you're about to hear it probably. Wait for it. It may not happen, but I always, I always check for it anyway. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Jesus Christ, though. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, I would I completely agree. I'm streaming. I'll come get I'll come get food later. Okay. Alright. Alright. But uh yeah. And actually, you're right. That's literally until Nintendo wants to play the uh, until until Nintendo wants to play the power game. I think they'll always struggle in, in third party. The difference, I think, the reason why people miss like the old school 
Yeah, my mom does it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I live at home. Um, but Nintendo will always struggle. Realistically, I think the reason why people can play complain more, um, they all because the problem is we a lot of people have been doing a lot of comparisons between the Switch and the Wii U and the Wii. And the reason why people always complain more is because the Wii got more exclusive content, right? The Wii got more Wii original games. The 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 Wii U got more Wii original games, and. I don't, it's not like I don't understand that argument, but you also got to understand we're in a different, we're in a completely different industry than we used to be. Uh, yeah, the Wii U still str- struggle a lot. The Wii U struggles, and I think the Wii U struggles ended up burning the, um, the Wii U struggles ended up burning the Switch in a lot of ways because a lot of those bridges were fucked up. So now what we, pretty much what we get left are kind of like 3ds carryovers like so in the sense that we'll get certain companies that'll make certain exclusive stuff but of course people complain because well it wasn't like we level we're not getting things like Mur- uh, muramasa the demon blade or we're not getting things like uh no more heroes well actually we are but that's besides the point we're not getting things like mad world or things like zach and wiki like we're not getting those those small exclusive games like we used to but part of that is because these companies don't want to fucking spend the money on it. Realistically, nowadays, companies are like, I don't really want to make exclusive content for one company anymore. Most companies don't do it. And if they do do it, they change their minds within a year. Remember remember when Dragon Quest XI S was supposed to be like exclusive content? And then I think the new versions, then the PS4 and Xbox One ports of those come out like in a few months, actually. Um, that's just how they're going to do things. Same thing with fucking... Uh, uh, Octopath Traveler. Remember how that was supposed to be Switch exclusive? And then it went to fucking, what was it, PC? And then it went to Stadia? It's still console exclusive, but it's it's still, re- but it's on like other things now. Uh, Bravely Default, I would be curious, that one might stay exclusive only because it's been exclusive to Nintendo stuff, but it wouldn't surprise me if that also got ported too. It's just how it goes. Oh, yeah, of course. And that's the thing, because it's easier to pour old games to it. And especially because Nintendo has the advantage slash disadvantage of having a lot of these games not come out. Oh, you guys never got Bioshock. Oh, you guys never got Devil May Cry. Oh, you guys never got uh, 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 Borderlands. Like, that's the game we're playing, unfortunately. And whether or not it's a good game, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys. But, yeah. Yeah, and it needs to be consistent cons- in that, and you have to have a console that's making so much money that they can't ignore it. Doom and Witcher, we didn't get, and it's not like we didn't get fucking current gen ports. We just didn't get as many as people wanted. Hell, we got Jump Force. That's a current gen port. And like I said, as much as I don't like Jump Force as a game, I am genuinely surprised at how good it looks. It looks way better than I thought it would. Um,. Well, people always convince that. You know what the difference is with the, the port conversation when it comes to, to, to PS4 and Xbox One? It's A, usually when people complain about ports on Switch. Well, actually on Switch, they complain about ports in general. But the goalpost gets changed for some reason with Switch where it's like, well, PlayStation and Xbox don't have as many first-party ports. And I'm like, well, yeah. But they also don't put out as many first-party games in the first place. <laughs> I feel like that's my argument with that. That's like that. I think that's my my issue. Is that like there's not a lot of first party ports. There's not a lot. Of, I mean, there aren't as many first party games to do ports of. So I, I uh, and like realistically, like I know everyone else is kind of bummed out with this year. I don't really care. And considering I didn't pick up any of the new games, I've actually picked up more ports than new games. I think the only two games I picked up this year was Xenoblade. It was Xenoblade, and then it'll be Mario. I think Mario and Xenoblade are the only two. Oh, no, Shantae. Shantae was the other game. But I haven't picked up that many games, but I'm just not as genuinely angry as some people are about the whole situation. Partially because I don't I don't know. This year I, this year has a bunch of shit in it, and it's just like, yeah. But uh, a lot of you guys, I think you guys want me to do the questions, so I'll do the questions. Got to make a video call to the girlfriend. Have a great afternoon. All right, let's switch games. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it.
Well, I mean, we're just talking in general, though. I mean, it kind of started with Mario, then it turned into a general conversation. Uh, it's called Natural Flow, I guess. But uh, let me let me get this Wawa. Um. Well, people don't want to talk, have that conversation. Because PC wins in every situation. That's why people don't want to have that conversation. <clears throat> I feel like... I, I understand the complaint, though, about not getting a lot of new content this year. I get it. But realistically, no one says the shit about the PlayStation 4. And the PlayStation 4 is only two games this year. Came out within a month of each other. When you, th- when you look at PlayStation 4's exclusive co- titles, you get... You're getting, you got Last of Us in June, and then you got um, Ghost of Tsushima in July. Oh, and I guess Resident Evil, because I think Resident Evil technically is exclusive, but that's a remake. Um, But it's the same situation, though. Xbox didn't even put out anything consistent. At all, actually. Now I think about it, there was no exclusive game on Xbox. Except for maybe, well... I guess Battletoads would count, but it's fucking Battletoads, so, like, what the fuck ever. Um, Yeah, the PS4 has the advantage of having so much third-party support, people are willing to forgive the lack of exclusives, because PlayStation has never made a lot of exclusives. They do okay. Uh, But let me quickly talk about... um, Let's talk about, let's do some of the questions because I haven't, and we got like 15 minutes left. So let me do a couple of the questions. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Some of these I don't think I deleted like I was supposed to. Okay, Resident Evil 3 is on Xbox. All right, never mind then. I thought it was Sony exclusive for some reason. I thought, isn't there? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, well. Let's move on. Anyways, so let's go through some questions. So what about that Mario Direct? Thoughts on it as a whole? Do you find the time exclusive things on Star All Stars to be scummy? What happened to Galaxy 2? I guess I'll quickly address it because I don't feel like I went through everything. I, I, I'm i fine with the Direct. Most people know me now to know that I'm a bigger Sonic fan than Mario fan. So, like, for me buying these ports, when I buy the All-Stars pack in, like, another week? Well, actually, probably two weeks. Going on two weeks, but it's, like, a week or so. Um, I never played any of these games. I didn't play 64. I played most of these games, like, for, like, an hour if that like i played sunshine and demo stations i played 64 a couple times but never got anywhere further in it uh and then sun uh galaxy i've never touched i don't think i may have played galaxy at a demo station but none of these games i ever owned or played so for me it's not really old i know i know it's old content but like for me i've never played these games so for me it will be like a new experience um I don't have an issue with the direct for the most part, though. But I recognize why people would be mad. Uh, I think it would have been better to have one like brand new console game people would have been excited about. Uh, do I find the time exclusive thing to be scumming? Not really. I can understand why it's annoying, but like scummy, I feel like is not the same thing. Scummy would be a difference if like. Scummy would imply that, like, I'm trying to, how do I put it? That they're intentionally doing this to drive up price. But the problem is, it's fucking Mario. Like, it's fucking Mario. Like, Mario has such a repertoire, there's no reason to do it. So, I think it's primarily because they realize that limited shit tends to, to sell out better anyway, but still. Uh, Final Fantasy remake is a place. That's what it was. It was place. It was Final Fantasy Seven is what I was thinking of. Final Fantasy Seven was the the exclusive thing I was thinking of earlier. Sunshine Shelf is like fifty dollars used, so the collection is way more affordable. It's true. It's very much true. Uh, I understand why people are still disappointed with the limited release, but I don't think it's scummy. So that's my that's my thing with that. I don't think it's scummy, but I, I understand why people are annoyed with it. Uh, let's see, Galaxy Two. I don't have no idea what the goal is for that one. 
That was probably the weirdest. That's like my weirdest thing is the fucking Galaxy 2 thing. I don't understand. What's up, Ty? That's like my only concern. I don't understand the Galaxy 2 situation. I don't know if they thought it would be way too much worth it. Uh, fuck me. I, my brain, guy. My brain. My brain got fried. Sorry. <laughs> uh, also, uh, real quick, I'm probably gonna have to leave in a minute anyway because uh, I had Target do like shipping to my house and they just dropped the shit off, but I didn't tell my mom. So there's a high chance my mom might walk outside and get randomly ambushed by a guy that she doesn't recognize. So that might be kind of funny. I am gonna do the Resident. Evil, I am gonna continue the Resident Evil Three playthrough. I've been dicking around with that. I still have. That's the other thing. I still have games in my back catalog. I need to do. Yeah, I Galaxy Two. I don't really understand what their goal. Why they didn't? It might have been. I don't know. I actually don't know. A lot of people think it's so they can use the port for later, which they can. But Galaxy Two really isn't the game for that. Like Galaxy Two is so more focused on like its level design. I almost would argue. There's no point in it, I guess. I don't know. I don't fucking know. That's just my thought process. But yeah, overall, I didn't think the direct was bad. I liked the time exclusive thing. It's kind of lame, but I don't think it's scummy. Uh, and I don't know what the fuck they did with Galaxy 2. Well, Persona 5 Royal. I don't know if I would count Persona 5 Royal because Persona 5 Royal is essentially just an updated, like, a go- it's essentially Persona 4 Golden. Like, it's not completely brand new content. It's probably like 80% the same shit with like 20% new content. No, I'm not buying a PS5 day one. If you don't, you may not be able to buy it for at least a year because of limited stock. So think, think, well, here's my thing about PlayStation 5. I'll quickly mention this. PlayStation 5, I guess to give context, I didn't buy a PlayStation 4 Pro until 2017. I played a Wii U exclusively from 2013 to 2017. So I'm not someone who's really in a rush to get a PlayStation 5, especially when there's nothing on it <clears throat> that I have to buy it for. The only game I'm somewhat interested in doing, uh, the only thing I wouldn't care about if, um, the only thing um, that I'd be somewhat interested in playing is Spider-Man. And I can wait for that because it's essentially just kind of like a, a DLC expansion in a way, so I'm not in a rush. I feel bad because this part seems to be all over the place. And then the kicker is I'm going to be fucking talking in like another 20 minutes uh, on Juices Loose, so let me delete this question. I'm going to try to go through at least a couple more. Uh, When you were younger, did you have friend groups where you didn't like everyone in them? Yeah, all the fucking time. I hate people. I actively hate people. So, like, it's very hard to find a group of people where I like everyone in that group. Usually, I'm more annoyed with someone. Not that I hate them, but, like, I just wasn't a fan of some of the people in there. Do you think it's fair for Shonen Jump to cancel series so early, or should they let them be published for at least a year to see how the story develops? Shonen Jump has this system primarily because a show that's good will grip you immediately. If the show isn't gripping me immediately or isn't doing well enough in the rankings where people are invested in it, it's not worth it. So I understand it. It's a really harsh and really rough industry, but I can I understand it and I can respect it. So, And I have respect for anybody who's able to get a series published in Shonen Jump to begin with and then get it to last for a little bit. And then for those who can get it to last for long amounts of times, shit's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Hopefully you get to play DLC Spider-Man. Uh, I will in the future. I'm just not in a hurry for it. And actually, Black Jedi, you're right. Time exclusive for the physical version wouldn't be a problem if the digital version wasn't limited. I 100% agree on that. If the digital version was like always available, I wouldn't be as mad about it. Uh, most games coming to PS5 are dual releasing on PS4. Yeah, that's the main thing. So I'm not in a hurry to catch... Uh, I'm not in a hurry to get a PlayStation 5 because half of those games I can still play on my PS4 or PC. 
especially with them talking about putting their more of the games on PC. I'm not in a fucking hurry, personally. I'm not. Uh, what else? Do you think characters from different Shonen series wasted potential to be better characters? Because in Shonen, the viewers don't expect them to lose or die as part of development, and more like winning due to their friends bond. Well, yeah, I mean, but Shonen Shonen has a different aim than like sinning, but I can agree with that argument that like Shonen has has been so much typecasted into a certain type of writing style that it feels like you could do better with certain characters. But it also depends on the story and the lore and that kind of shit. Because if the story isn't facilitating more development, then I can't really be mad. Like Naruto, I feel like Naruto, I feel like was wasted potential. But that's because Naruto's world building and development was so good, it felt so fucking depressing. When the shit wasn't followed up on. So I can agree with with that. But the, the story has to build that expectation. I don't just come into a story. Expecting the greatest thing of all time. The story has to make me want that. Or make me get excited for it. So it primarily depends on the story. The story sets itself up to be better. Than what it is. Like Dragon Ball. I think Dragon Ball suffers the same problem. Especially Super. Super is, to me is a huge disappointment. But Super is built up that expectation. That's why. Grandma in general built up an expectation to make me want want it. So that's the whole thing. Oh, the physical version is all definitely going to sell out. There's no there's no doubt in my mind. The fact that people already said that uh, I think it was already confirmed that like the pre-orders for fucking the pre-orders for uh, uh, the Mario collection are already like the second best selling game under Animal Crossing. I already knew it was up. I knew it was up. Oh yeah, we will we will talk about the anime rapper, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Let me try to get through a couple more questions though. Yeah, I don't understand the eShop thing. Ironically enough, they did bring back Pikmin, I think, on the Wii U eShop. So I don't know what the fuck they're doing. That whole situation is just weird. Um. Also, Red Dragon asked me about the sequel for Snafu which is the light novel sequel, which I think is based on their third year. I'm excited about that. I think I talked about it in one of my episode reviews. But yeah, I'm super excited to get a light novel sequel. I need to finish the season three, and then that'll kind of dictate how I feel about this. But more Snafu content is always good for me. Um, I thought I talked about Kiss Anime last... Maybe not last week, but the week before last... Uh, I don't know when we're doing the GX thing around Sword. The, uh, deletion of Kiss Anime. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we already talked about the Kiss Anime stuff. So, yeah, okay, I thought I did. So, I can delete that one. I probably talked about it on here, but I didn't, like, make it, like, a legit video on it. That's what it was. Uh, Let's see. Some of these questions I just didn't go back and delete. Uh, let's see. I think that's more thing. I think I talked about G4 already, so that one can go. I kind of already talked about the whole, uh, Nintendo and Xbox stuff. I think the internet lets people play racism too quickly. I don't want to get into that one in this particular thing, because that's, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, what else? Oh, and then the last thing was ever thought about reading manga Berserk or playing the games like Berserk Muso on PS4. No, Berserk just doesn't seem like my type of series. Nothing against people who enjoy it. I just don't personally care for it. So nothing against Berserk fans. I just, I know it's not my type of show. What are your thoughts on Ash Ketchum in general? For me, I hate him with a passion. I'm curious on your interest is. I don't mind Ash Ketchum. My problem is, is the writing for him is wildly inconsistent. Uh, well, people have ad blocker. That's the main thing for Kiss Anime. But uh, I don't mind Ash, but Ash is just wildly inconsistent, which is I don't really blame Ash himself for. It's more so like the writing for him is really inconsistent and bad. And that's what makes it frustrating. Uh, fucking. It's far. It's hard. The only reason why, like, it depends on what series too, because Ash is very different from region to region. Like, 
Shonen Ash from X and Y is kind of like whatever with me. Uh, Best Wishes Ash I find entertaining but dumb. Uh, Journey's Ash I think is the, probably the best balance of him since like Gen 3. But like it's killing the development for other characters. So uh, it kind of, I don't know, Ash I flip back and forth with. I like him in a lot of situations, but in other situations, it's just like, fuck me, bro. But like I said, it's the writing, and it's the way that they want to do the an- the anime. The anime has completely different uh, goals than it should. Which is a shame, but it is the reality of the situation. When are we going to get Pokemon Stadium and Snap games on Switch or Switch Pro? We are getting, we're getting Snap, I think, this year, I thought. What does Ash mean by Pokemon Master? I wish that plot point was explained. Why do you think Game Freak and the Pokemon Company shaft Johto so bad? Like the starters don't get any Megas. And from what I'm hearing about the rumors for Crown Tundra, Johto is getting overlooked once again. I have no fucking idea. I have no idea why Johto gets slighted. Yeah, because there's no reason to do that. Although they did add some Johto Mons. Like we got Blissey. We got Heracross. Um, I'm trying to go through my Jodo list off the top of my head. It's not like they didn't give Jodo any love, but still. I don't know if Snap is confirmed for this year, but I thought it might be. Maybe I'm wrong. I apologize. I'm not sure. Uh, no excuse to why they can't do a clean slate on Ash each region. There is no excuse, but remember the anime at the end of the day, the whole goal of the anime is to market toys. So it's probably just not high on their priority list. That's the problem is that anime is just meant to be a disappointment. For older fans because the anime isn't really for older fans it's more for the younger fans but my mother's probably gonna come up here and it's already an hour in and you're gonna see me in like 15 minutes on the juice Zeus podcast so i'm going to end it for now because i want to get something to eat thank you uh yeah i want to go downstairs and get something to eat so i'm gonna go do that you'll see me in like 15 minutes on the juice Zeus podcast so i'm gonna grab some food if you ask me why I'm eating, you know why. Because I'm out here putting out content every day for everybody to enjoy. And with all that being said, life's a game, play to win. And I will catch you guys later. Sorry for the jankiness of the episode. But the YouTube version, I'll cut out a lot of the, the internet nonsense. So, uh, yeah. Catch me on the Juices Loose. Go watch the Juices Loose. Go watch the Juices Loose. All right. I'm out. I'm hungry. I'm out. I'm hungry. I'm out. Everyone spam emotes before I go. Spam the emotes. Spam emotes, god damn it. Spam the emotes and then we're going to be out on this bitch. Spam them. Spam your emotes. Hey, spam emotes. Let's go. Emote hell. Bring work. Welcome to emote hell, boy. Emote hell, boy. Let's do it. And emo hell, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Peace.